Cogentix Medical's CST5000 Flexible Cystoscopy System introduces a powerful and efficient solution for urologists in both their hospitals and private clinic settings with reliable capabilities and complete functionality for performing traditional cystoscopy procedures and surgeries. The system is designed to help physicians perform safe and effective procedures while providing breakthrough advances that could significantly improve the efficiency of the urology practice. The CST5000 flexible cystoscope contains image and illumination features like other cystoscopes, but unlike conventional scopes, the CST5000 has a unique D-shape insertion tube that does not contain a working channel. Instead, the CST5000 utilizes the patented endosheath technology, a sterile, disposable sheath that fits snugly on the scope, providing a barrier between the endoscope and the patient. The sterile, disposable sheath also contains a 2.1 millimeter working channel for irrigation or accessory placement. The optically clear window at the tip of the sheath allows the endoscope to visualize anatomy clearly and to capture vivid images the CST5000 cystoscopy system incorporates two essential components, the reusable D-shaped endoscope and the sterile disposable endosheath system. This video provides a step-by-step -step overview of the system's setup and use, but is not intended to replace the CST5000 owner's manual, which provides greater detail on how to set up, use, and care for the system. In addition to the endoscope and disposable sheath, an installation stand is required for proper system preparation. Before installing the sheath, check the cystoscope insertion tube for any defects or damage. Do not use abrasive cleaners on the lens surfaces. Check the endosheath disposable packaging for defects or damage. Open the outer package for the sterile sheath. Open the sheath's package carefully. Put on two pairs of sterile gloves. Remove the drape bag from the tray. Open the bag to create depth for the later placement of the sheath. Remove adhesive strip backing and secure it to the back of the installation stand. The extra adhesive backing can be folded over onto the back of the bag on either side of the table to ensure that it does not stick to any instruments during the rest of this procedure. Carefully remove the sheath from the package. Place the sheath into the installation stand. The sheath must be placed into the stand with the accessory port facing toward you. Note, the sheath fits into the stand in only one direction. Fold back the control body cover to expose the top opening of the endosheath connector. Before inserting the cystoscope into the sheath, it is important that the articulating distal end of the scope is straight or in the neutral position. While standing directly in front of the installation stand, hold the cystoscope vertically over the sheath connector. Align the scope's D-shaped insertion tube with the D-shaped opening of the sheath connector. The flat side of the scope must be matched up with the accessory port and tubing. Gently slide the insertion tube into the sheath. Do not twist the insertion tube during installation as it may create resistance. Align the locking knob on the cystoscope with a vertical slot on the sheath connector. When the locking knob is fully seated in the slot, rotate it to a horizontal position. This secures the fit between the sheath and the cystoscope. You can verify proper seating of the cystoscope distal head into the sheath window by visualizing a clear image on the screen of the DPU. No glare should be evident and the sheath window should be in direct contact with the insertion tube distal head. If you note a glare or a gap, operate the angulation lever up and down several times to articulate the bending section. This process should ensure a fully seated sheath. To connect the irrigation tubing to the flow control valve, place the valve into the open position, then slide the tubing in. Adjust the tubing for minimal slack and place the valve into the closed position. Avoid pulling the tubing too tightly into the flow control valve. If the accessory port is used for irrigation, the flow control valve must be kept in the closed position to prevent backflow of fluid. Remove outer pair of gloves. Next, pull the control body cover up and over the cystoscope control body and videoscope cable so that both are completely covered. 
Secure the control body cover and irrigation tubing to the video scope cable by wrapping or twisting the cover around the cable and securing with the clips. Carefully place the biopsy cap onto the lure fitting until it is securely in place. Next, remove the cap from the irrigation tubing lure lock and connect the fluid management accessory. Note that fluid withdrawal and irrigation may also be accomplished by connecting to the standard lure lock fitting on the accessory port. The cystoscope is now ready for use. Lift the system out of the installation stand. Also, visually inspect the sheath to make sure that the distal tip of the cystoscope is flush with the sheath window. Activate the flow control valve to ensure proper operation of the fluid irrigation. Always use the installation stand to remove the endoscope from the sheath. Attempting to remove the endoscope without using the installation stand could cause damage to the endoscope. Put on two pairs of clean gloves. Ensure that the drape bag completely covers the installation stand. Slide the endoscope and sheath into the installation stand with the accessory port facing toward you. The contaminated sheathed insertion tube must be contained within the drape bag to capture and contain any patient material and or fluids. Disconnect the irrigation tubing from the source. Remove the control body cover clips and discard them in the drape bag. Keeping your hands on the outside of the contaminated control body cover, pull the cover forward and down off the endoscope. Remove the outer set of gloves. Do not handle the endoscope's control body with contaminated gloves. Disconnect the irrigation tubing from the flow control valve by pressing the open flow button and then stretch the tubing while pulling it away from the base of the slot at the front of the valve. Continue pulling on the tubing until it is clearly out of the valve. Rotate the locking knob into the vertical position so that it is aligned with the slot on the endosheath connector. Using the angulation lever, articulate the distal bending section of the endoscope into the straight or neutral position. Hold the endoscope's control body in one hand, using the bottom outside portion of the drape bag as a barrier between your fingers and the sheath, gently and carefully grasp the sheath's window, then slowly and gently withdraw the scope from the sheath. Do not twist the endoscope when removing it from the sheath. Doing so can damage the insertion tube. If you experience difficulty removing the endoscope from the sheath, do not use excessive force in trying to remove it. Place the endoscope in a non-contaminated area. Inspect the insertion tube and distal tip and confirm that these areas are dry. If moisture is observed, there may have been a leak into the sheath during the procedure, provided that the endoscope was dry when the sheath was attached. In this case, the endoscope must be high level disinfected or sterilized. Fold the top end of the contaminated drape bag over the endosheath connector and remove it from the installation stand. Carefully discard the contaminated sheath per hospital or facility policy. The endoscope should then undergo the recommended cleaning and disinfecting procedure.